Digital 410 Productions proudly presents the Waterman and D-Train Show. Digitized live from the ACT Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the Waterman and D-Train Show. Hey everybody, once again, I I still don't know what to say, I, have no, I gave my opener away, I no longer have an opener. So what's <laughs> going on everybody, happy Sunday. Uh, we're here live from the Act Computer Studio in Cape Coral, Florida. I'm your host, D Train, and here's your other host, Dave the Waterman. Yeah, bro. And as always, joining us live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's uh, the other, 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 other host, sidekick, news guy, all West things, Coast host. everything. Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how you doing tonight? What's up, gentlemen? I'm doing all right. Chicken's all right. ass when it eats. Yeah, right. That's a visual joke for those you uh, tune in at home. You know, hey, bro, you know what? I'm right out of the gate. You, you, you're setting me up, bro. What's up? Right out of the gate, man. I got to say, speaking of chicken's ass, lost one last night. You lost some chicken ass last night? Yep. Coyote get it? Yep. Coyote or bobcat. I'm pretty sure it was the bobcat that got it last night. About 3.30 in the morning, man. I started hearing, you know, the whole... <laughs> just going crazy man you know i mean mm-hmm. loud and i jumped up and uh i went out the back door and i you know kicked open the kicked open the lanai door and and ran out to the backyard and was looking at the chicken coop man i thought these are your neighbor's chickens they are they are but i mean bro i, I it's like i spend more time with them than he does you know which is the truth because i'm you know you know me i'm always outside i'm always you know running around the yard and out front, out back, mm-hmm. whatever. So, so anyways, uh, I heard it. I heard it's, it's like where he's got the chicken coops up against his side of his house. Nice coop. It's, it's, it's really nice actually. And he's got like a five gallon bucket for a feeder with feed in it and stuff. And, okay. uh, you know, water drip and all that so they can get their water and everything. But, um, 90% of the time, man, they're running loose around the yard. Sure. And we had the fence. He, I had to help him. I don't know. It was probably about a month ago. We fenced in uh, one part of his backyard that was open to an open field where the one bobcat was coming over to, but he was locking them up at night and it couldn't get in there. Well, he had been leaving them out at night. And then uh, and I heard the the bobcat jump on the – he's taken uh, – what do you call that um, – like a like a tin roof okay, he's made cor- a, corrugated, corrugated steel yeah the corrugated steel roof on on the the coop mm-hmm. and you could hear that bobcat jumping on top of that thing like it was jumping like pound like you know how they jump in the yeah. snow you seen you know national mm-hmm. geographic stuff it was like jumping up and down on top of the coop and i'm going man i could hear it yeah boom 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 so and is the chicken coop doors not locked at night it wasn't. It hadn't been because say, been, it's not like the bobcat's smart enough to know if it pounces on the aluminum that, or the steel that the chickens will come hauling ass out, and then he can scoop them that's up. That's what I think happened last night. It's like the door's not closed on the coop anymore. Like he had been leaving it open for a long time because mm-hmm. we hadn't had any issues since what three, four, five months ago, about four months ago, beginning of summer. This is the fir- the first and only time. Well, I think I've seen the bobcat once since then. But it came back. Either that or the coyote, man. I don't see a coyote jumping six feet in the no, air, though. That's, that's more of a cat thing. Yeah. Actually, they do. They will get over a six-foot yard wall or fence. Coyotes will? Yeah, they actually have a, what's called a coyote roller. You can. It's basically literally a roller. You install along the top edge of the, the gate mm-hmm. on the outside. And because it doesn't make it all the way over, it catches that roller and will slip it back down. Now, let me ask you this, because um, I was going to bring this up. I, I know what that sounds like, because when I used to stay with mom and her trailer down on the river, we'd hear the mountain lions jump up on top because mm-hmm. she had a hill, came down behind the trailer, mm-hmm. and then they would just kind of run and jump up and walk across the roof of the trailer. Do you ever remember hearing that when you lived down there? I heard it. I didn't. I probably didn't even know what it was. But yeah, you'd hear them just, just trampling dun, on dun, the top dun, of her. Dun, dun. Mountain because the top of those, Yeah, because the top of those trailers, or even bobcats. Or, yeah. Right. Top of those trailers are just aluminum. They yeah. They got a little bit of an arch to them. True. True. A little bit of insulation, a little bit, you know. But, yeah, I I, I was like, uh-oh. And then, of course, this morning, I'd gotten up, 
and I knew, you know, I'm not going to go jumping over the fence at 3.30 in the morning in my neighbor's backyard, you know. No, not to save somebody else's chickens. Uh, yeah, not to save somebody else's chickens. And then uh, when I got up this morning, yeah, we found the body. And I was like, oh, man, that's guys, bad. That's you bad. Guys, yeah. You guys see the size of that chicken? <laughs> yeah. Best Whoa. scene ever from Young Guns. They're all on peyote. Yeah. And, that... um, it was one of the uh, lesser God characters. Comes out of the cave. You guys! Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, what's his name? The poet. She's my flower. I'm her butterfly. Actually, yeah. it's more like Kiefer this. Sutherland was yeah. saying that part. He was like, um, where is it not? It's more like, she's my flower and I'm her butterfly. Oh, butterfly. butterfly. You, guys! You, guys! you guys! You guys! You guys see the size of that chicken? That's about exactly. Shooting it. He starts shooting at everything. Yeah, that's about exactly what it's like. She's my butterfly. <laughs> yep, that's such a great movie. Hell yeah, Kiefer Sutherland, Emilio Estevez, uh, Luke Gossip Jr. Yep, Charlie Sheen, and uh, oh, why can't I think of Los? Not Los Lobos, the La Bamba guy. I already said Luke. Luke I said Luke Gossip. You Jr. said Luke, Luke Gossip Jr. Luke Diamond Phillips, Luke Diamond Phillips dude. My bad. <laughs> Luke Gossip Jr. Where the hell did he come from? That's Chappie from uh, Iron Eagle. <laughs> yeah, dude, Iron Eagle, man. Or if some of you may have known him from. Uh, Alien Minds. Uh, yeah, with... Uh, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid, man. That was a cool movie. Those were all movies that were, like, ran into the ground on HBO back in the early oh, 90s. Yeah. That Starman. Yeah. Dun, I remember dun, I used to stay at my buddy dun, Danny's dun, dun, dun. house every uh, weekend, or a lot of times during the summertime. His dad was a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And it was at the time HBO Pumpkinhead was on. And that was oh. the world's dumbest fucking Heavy movie. rotation. And I just remember we'd be always passed out in front of the TV at night and Pumpkinhead would come on. It's just insane. But anyhow, yeah. your neighbor has a dead chicken. Yeah, so anyways, yeah. So, yeah, you guys. Yeah, the, the so yeah, so now we're, I'm down to three chickens, man. There were six. I think two of them ran off because they were, they're, you know, the so-called free-range chickens, which I guess they go, they'll, they'll take off, man, like a few hundred yards from the house, man. But living in a neighborhood... Somebody's either going to scoop one up, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or some, something happened. It might end up on somebody's you dinner table. That chicken for dinner tonight. Yeah, man. Yeah. It might end up on somebody's dinner table for when all I know. When we first moved in here, one of our neighbors, not like on our street, but within a few blocks, had a goddamn rooster. And every oh. night around 7 o'clock, that son of a bitch would start. Because everybody thinks roosters only cock it will do in the morning. Well, they also do that no. crap when the sun goes down. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's like a broken watch. It's right twice a day. And so... And that's just so goddamn annoying. Yeah, they yeah they get they get going, man. Yeah, I'm so glad he doesn't have the rooster. But the chickens are bad enough. I he's mean, gonna they... have to secure them at night. Well, you know, he's got to close the door. Could have been a raccoon. You think? Yeah, I, I know because um, long before I had these parrots, when I first moved down here, I got yeah. a uh, eastern rosella when I was dating a squirrel, and we broke up and I was bouncing around. So mm -hmm. my stepmom, uh, she loved birds, and so we put it at my dad's house. Mm -hmm. And the thing got really cage bound and it was getting kind of mean. So my dad decided, well, let's just put the cage out on the lanai. The lanai is completely screened in. It basically has an aviary. And he right. would open the cage up and the thing would fly, fly around. around and it would go back to his cage at night. Well, he had a dog door and he would oh. secure the dog door at night. Well, he forgot to secure it. And I came over there in the morning and uh, his dog woke him up about four in the morning, scratching the door. There's two raccoons out on the lanai. They killed it. Oh, man. Yeah, so raccoons are actually carnivores as, you know, yeah, as they, well as trash so, dumpster pandas. Yeah, yeah, the old dumpster panda. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely kill it. So they'll go after it. Well, I, you know, I would figure, well, I didn't know, he. you know, I didn't know that I guess chickens are blind at night. I guess they don't see. Hmm. That's what I, you know. That's what that's what I, my neighbor was telling me. Now I got to look that up. Yeah, I don't know the night vision standards of a chicken. Listening and knows about chickens, man. I'd love to you know hear from you guys real quick. We'll give up the number, man. Two three nine, two three nine two five six. Let's see what do we got here. Five five three seven. Two three nine two five six five five three seven. If you know about chickens, man, and if they're blind at night, and you can confirm it, man, I'd love to hear from you. But that's what my neighbor was saying, man. He says, I guess at night they go like completely blind so they freeze and i noticed i've seen them before like literally in the yard frozen still yeah john Crafts on facebook live he goes i could have hit a chicken a few hours ago going to on my way to work it was definitely a, well it just starts growing up <laughs> it was definitely a white egg layer for sure yeah dude hell yeah man 
run them so much. I wonder if you can, if you can eat those. Well, you, hey, Ken. Thank you for tuning in. You must be a new listener because he's <laughs> asking which one is D-Train, which one's the Waterman. Well, <laughs> that's Dave the Waterman over yonder. Yo. He gets top billing. I'm D-Train or Don. For some reason tonight, Facebook, actually, when I'm commenting on here, instead, yeah. of, instead of it doing under the Waterman and D-Train show, it's doing underneath my Don Abernathy Facebook page. Eh, whatever. And so, yeah, um, so it's showing my name, giving out the phone numbers. Right. Right, yeah. So I wonder if you could eat those chickens. What do you think? Are those edible chickens, man? Are those the kind of chickens that you well, have in your yard? Unless he's feeding them toxic waste, yeah. I mean, they're only as edible as what you feed them. I mean, I, dude, I give them oatmeal. Yeah. Uh, is it, apparently, it's like a treat for them. You know, and you can't get the instant oatmeal, the minute oatmeal. You got to get the real deal oatmeal, you know. As long as it's not like apple cinnamon or whatever. What's that, Gordon? And you don't want to blow your chickens up. No, man, but I mean, I want them plump, you know. You want them plumpy, man. Wouldn't you want a, a nice chicken breast, man? I mean, Yeah, but damn. I think what he's getting at is much like when you would hear those... I think it's urban legend. I've right. never seen anybody do it, but you hear the stories. Of, oh, I would go down in the ocean, and I would throw the pel- uh, pelicans or the... Uh, uh. uh what the fuck are those white birds? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, what, seagulls. Seagulls, uh, Alka Seltzer, and oh. they would eat it and then drink water and blow up their stomachs. Mm. I think it's urban legend, but no, like Gordon, I well, think you've Gordon. Got a, you've got a couple of birds you could test it on if you think it's. Urban I got legend. one. I'll be happy to test it on. But no, what <laughs> Gordon's getting at is, um, oatmeal tends to, right, inflate. That's when true. It gets yeah, it's wet. like a yeah. So true. if they eat too much of it and then start drinking a lot of water, it could rupture their stomach. Very true. Very true. Maybe. And plus birds. <laughs> Birds have crops in their throat. Uh huh. It's like a sack. Like if okay. you look at the African gray, pulls out all her feathers, you can see hers. And that's what they actually, when they're feeding their babies, they're not actually regurgitating from their stomach. It's, it's right stored in, in their crop, kind of like a hamster has it in their cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so whenever you give parrots like chicken and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you got to make sure it's not hot. It'll actually burn a hole in their crop. Oh, sh- so, yeah, yeah under, right at their neck, they have a, a sack. It's called huh. a crop. And that's what the actual mother birds will fill up with food. And then that's what they actually spit. They're not actually regurgitating from their stomach. Okay. That's that's pretty damn cool. Gordon, you got health insurance, right? Yes, I do. You got uh, it's one of them fancy pharmacy cards. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I do have a fancy pharmacy card. We were talking, I think, last episode, maybe the week before, about how everything's mail order now and food in the future. You know, we we're speculating the restaurants be delivery or just simply drive through because everything's everything's mail order now. Mm-hmm. Retail's going to the wayside. Have you run into this with the pharmacist, um, Carrie? gets a couple different prescriptions for her lupus medicines. And one of them, um, she has to pay out of pocket for right now because the pharmacy, not the pharmacy, the insurance company won't pay for it through the pharmacy. They only want to pay through for it through a mail delivery service. What? Because, much like anything else, when a pharmacist dispenses your medicines, mm-hmm. They charge the insurance company a processing or service fee. Uh, okay. And so now they're trying to squeeze out the pharmacist. And pharmacist, I know a guy, when I first moved down here, I worked at the call center. I, mm-hmm. I worked with this guy named Jamie, and he went to school to be a pharmacist. And they make damn good money. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. But now if these insurance companies are trying to squeeze them out by going through these mail-in based, you know, where the pharmacies come strictly to your house through the mailbox, yeah. here within a few years we may see less pharmacies open. Because they're wow. trying to squeeze them out because they're trying to, you know, once again, insurances are such a fraud. These are the only thing that you pay for on a monthly basis. Well, at least car insurance, health yeah, insurance, and homeowners insurance exactly. that you pray you never have to use. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to these medical insurances, no, well, hey, why, why should we pay the pharmacist to dispense your money, your pills when we can just mail it to your house? Yeah. And so one of them, like, the, the insurance company will not pay for it if she picks up the pharmacist. She has to have it delivered to the house. Wow. Have you ran into that? I run into a little of it. What's kind of interesting um, is one of the – God, our insurance company owns all the doctors we go to. So it's it's beyond uh, just a pharmacy. So say Southwest Medical is owned by UHG basically. Damn, that's right. They're keeping racket. everything in their system. And then Aetna had bought CVS – or sorry, CVS Pharmacies had bought Aetna recently. So if you've got uh-huh. Aetna insurance, there's a direct tie there. So, yeah, everything's kind of – Getting, you know, just coming together, larger corporations, all the small guys are, are getting pushed out for sure. But, I, mean, uh, I mean, I know locally we have a few insurance companies that are uh, actually still mom and pops are still going pretty strong. And then, of yeah. course, you have the most, a lot of people go to the pharmacies that are in your, you know, your grocery stores and all that. But yeah, they're, we're going to get pushed into a mail order world and it's going to be a little crazy. Everything's going to, I mean, everything. Yeah. Groceries, 
medications, whatever, you know, everything, dude. Your I will clothing. say, I don't do the home delivery groceries, but I will say sometimes, not all the mm-hmm. time, because I find out when you do do this, um, especially when it comes to your produce, you don't exactly get the best. They don't really yeah. sit there and fondle all the melons. They just grab a bag. But I've done the Walmart pickup thing quite Have a few times where you just go on the app, you put in what you want. And really? you go pick it up, and they put it in the back of your car. Is it pretty legit? I mean, do you find that you're getting the exact product that you're ordering? I mean, if you know they what I'm don't saying? have it in stock, they will give you a substitute. And even if it's bigger bulk, they'll charge you the original price. What? Are, okay, let me ask you. But then. the problem, like I, the problem I, I run into is primarily produce. Like you're, yeah, you won't get that. The, wouldn't the corn's not like what you would have picked out, mm-hmm. or like the beans aren't like the best. Or there's actually yeah, here's the big, here's the biggest one, and this tomatoes. is so fucking funny. You go on there and you order grapes, right? Yeah. And you just put in one. You think you're getting one bushel of grapes, yeah. but you're actually getting like half a pound. And so, you, like twice, we got less than a full bag of grapes. It's like they really they divided it up because <laughs> I guess I I don't do it. Carrie does, but I yeah. guess you got to put in like make sure it's one pound and not just like one point of like. Oh, okay. You literally get like one little fucking stem. Like what? They're, yeah, they're like super. Super uh, uh, on, on the point, nose. on point with what whatever it is, I guess. But um, I will say the two advantages of that one, if you're in a hurry. Yeah. Two, by doing that, you drastically cut down on the um, spontaneous purchases. Oh, I would. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people will go like you know somebody tweeted I uh, put it on Facebook last night. I went to the store for butter and milk and spent eighty one dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you go on, you know, you go and order it online. You're you're basically ordering the things you need, and you're not buying all the supplemental stuff that you rack up your your bill on. Well, look at how many times we used to go across the street from the radio station, and we would go for one thing and end up walking out with three or four things. You know, mm-hmm. we used to do that every day, man. Every day we'd go over for something. And end up coming back with a couple of things. Why do you think I got so fucking fat? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. I had to drop 40 pounds after working there for five yeah. and a half years. Yeah, you did, man. I blew up. You guys want... You did, you, you did, man. For those of you who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you want a reason to subscribe, go through... There's like 186 videos up there. But go through like some of the old ones and you'll see my, my face get bigger and bigger, yeah, and bigger to, start filling to the point out. i think the episode where i'm shooting dave with gummy bears out of a slingshot oh i got like two chins i got like real big fat big cheeks old, like your then, belly going man and then you'll see it progress the other way as i as yeah. i drop the 40 pounds but yeah you can see the timeline of my fat face and how how fat i get throughout the uh those old youtube videos that's funny man that's funny yeah i don't know see here's the thing is 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 the whole grocery store pickup how long okay Let's say you call in, you say, or you go online, boom, 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 you pick out your mm-hmm. items. How long does that take for them you, to put that together? You usually do it the day before. You do it the day before and then mm-hmm. pick up the following day. Correct. Okay. I didn't know if it was like, hey, man, within a couple of hours. No, or... what they do is I'll send you a text here, order's ready to pick up, and then you um, say, I'm on my way. Now, I will say the last time we did it, I did get pissed off because mm-hmm. it was pouring down rain. And unlike the public, Walmart does not provide their employees with ponchos to wear. Because no. ponchos, even though they sell them in the fucking hunting department, mm-hmm. are too high highfalutin for our employees to wear. Right. And they had one poor girl working. I pull up there and I check in. And I'm sitting there. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there. And another car pulls up. They bring out their order first. And I'm still sitting. And another car pulls up. And I finally get out of the car. She's like, what's going on? I like, oh, nothing. Just motherfuckers pulling up after me. Getting, I'm like, literally, they took care yeah. of three people who pulled up after me before. It's like, before they, hello, it's first come, first serve. Yeah, before they took care of you. Damn, mm-hmm. man. That's crazy. Yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not bagging on the mail or stuff. I just, I thought it was a little crazy when it came to the pharmacy. Yeah, stuff. Well, well, that's the whole thing is, is you're right, though. You're. I think you're absolutely right. It, it's going to get to the point to where... You're literally not going to have to go anywhere. From, you're not going to have to go outside at all. Well, and that's sad you know, on two fronts. Everything's going to come to your door, man. Social interactions are already getting pretty bad. We, you did. That's we, what I'm we saying. We discussed it verbatim, you know, about how employees have. But that's hurting it even worse, man. What about people's health? More and more people are going to live sedentary lifestyles. Yeah, I mean, we. You, you know, know, especially if you're one of these cats who works from home, like I mm-hmm. used to when I moved down here. Well, if you work from home, you don't know anybody or you don't want to know anybody, you got social anxiety, now yep. your food's delivered to you, now your medicine's delivered to you, you get your clothes delivered to you. Yep. What's the point? It'll be interesting to see over the next 40 years if if um, yeah. our life expectancy goes the other direction. Oh, I, yeah, I could see it. It's already. 
Do you think it's already starting, Gordon? Yeah. I have a story about it. All right. In, it makes in the news. Okay. It makes sense because I remember I think last week I was talking about I was at Walmart and I saw a mom and a father, uh, mid twenties, early thirties. Yeah. Neither one of them were obese. Right. Both of them riding in a, on a rascal. Get out of here. Because walking around like Walmart, skinny people like me riding rascal, you know the, they the probably, jazzies. They were probably thirty four pounds overweight, but okay. But that's still not obese. Usually no. when you think of those scooters, you think people who are extremely over mm-hmm. overweight, their their legs can't support them, or old people. Right. But these were just younger cats who could lose 30 pounds, but they were by no means to the point where they couldn't walk. They were just being lazy. They were just being lazy asses, man. And it's just... Wow. Like, or if you go to an amusement park, you see it. Oh, yeah. I will say I was out eating at a fast food restaurant that's by a high school, and I mm. was I had a little smile on my face because I think I counted about 12 kids before a fat one came by. Really? So I was I was a little happy for that to, to see that you know, that is going the other direction a little bit. Well, just maybe that yeah, that temporary moment in time, you know, because it seems like to me I see nothing but, you know, kids that are overweight, you know, you know, getting off the bus all the time, man. It's it's sad. It's sad, but you're right. I, with all the, the interaction and video games and, you know, that's the only way people are going to be talking to each other is through a headset and looking at somebody on a screen, man, and then going, hey, I need groceries, clothes, <laughs> Not leaving their home, not not seeing the sun for a year. I mean, who knows, man? Maybe maybe they're preparing people for uh for intergalactic space travel this way, man. <laughs> you know, I don't no, know, man. Intergalactic uh, space yeah, travel. You know, I'm no, just coming up with an idea. Of, you know why? There's no gravity, and so your your body doesn't have to. You know, you, you actually need to move. Yeah, I mean, no, you have to, but I'm just wondering why. You know, maybe they're just they're trying to prepare you for solitary confinement. Yeah, maybe. So. I don't know. While man. we're on the topic, it's not news yet, but I just figured since we're on the topic of yeah, school kids, um, we may have hinted around to this briefly last week. Um, students may not be suspended from school in California if bill passes. Uh oh. Currently, students from kindergarten to third grade can't be suspended for being disruptive or disobeying teachers and staff. Uh-huh. But if Senate Bill 419 passes, the same would apply to students from kindergarten through eighth grade. Really? Schools would then look for alternatives other than the usual punishments of suspension, detentions, etc. Um, by suspending children okay. and them not going to school, is that our main goal? Then I think they'll continue to act. I'm sorry, isn't that their main goal? So I think they'll continue to act out. Mm-hmm. So I think sure. by working through it in a different way, we could be more beneficial to the children themselves, says Victoria Jumfrey Jump of um, San Luis Obispo. Ah. If you send them home, they're not going to learn anything. But if you go to the, if you go, I'm sorry, but to go home and there's no one there to discipline them or do anything, that's the key right there. Mm. The problem isn't them not wanting to go to school. It's that when they do get in trouble, they don't have anybody at home who gives enough of a shit to discipline them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... And so, and I don't want to say a lot of it's bad parenting. It's hard to parent nowadays because if you do discipline kids in the old school ways and they get on reports and you get your goddamn kids taken away. So let me under... Yeah, that's uh-huh. what I'm... Trying. Hands off from the parents in regards to discipline and now the school wants to be hands off. Yes, because when you get all this bad press about how um, certain demographics of your schools get suspended over uh, other demographics, mm. then to get your name out of the paper, you just pass a, a law stating that you can't suspend kids kindergarten, eighth grade. Now, I can understand not suspending kids elementary school, but sixth, seventh, and eighth is when they really turn to a bunch of a-holes. You're going through, you know, hormonal change. But to, and the thing is... How are you going to rein them in? But not only that, how do you teach them discipline? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. How know? are you going to teach well, okay. them to respect their elders? Because the, the key thing is, is it says they're not going to suspend them for, disop- uh, for disruptive behavior or not obeying authoritarian figures. Yeah, so there's no consequences to their actions. So what happens okay. in ninth grade? I, I, so you're, you're little Dave, and Dave acts out. Right. Okay, well... Dave doesn't get suspended all through elementary school. Right, doesn't get any sort of, of uh, reprimanding Maybe or anything. Maybe you have to go sit in a quiet room or whatever. Right. The, the, but if you that's like not going to teach me nothing, yeah. man. That's not okay. going to teach me and so, nothing. So sixth through eighth grade, the same thing applies. Now ninth grade, you're an asshole. Yeah. Are the is there going to be like a shell shock when all of a sudden you are getting suspended, or is there the number of ninth graders going to 
the suspended ninth graders want to go through the roof because yeah. they've never been disciplined prior to that? I, I, I don't know. I you know states. I don't know, man. States are crazy. This is just crazy stuff because I, I'm going to shoot another. I'm going to shoot from from the west coast to the east coast oh. real quick because no, listen real quick because I think this this partakes okay. to the story, and that is that at, at a school uh, just on Friday. An officer arrested a six and an eight year old. Okay. Okay. For for throwing a tantrum in school, they actually handcuffed and arrested these kids. That's nonsense. So so what's the hell, man? So you've got, and this is in South Carolina. So you've got this going on in South Carolina. You've got the West Coast saying, "Hey, man, we're going to be soft on the kids." The East Coast is taking them so way out the other. So side they're going the completely the other spectrum, right? So you're going to have these kids that are being arrested that are going to turn into hooligans. You're going to have the kids that aren't being reprimanded pushing it to the limit and still possibly going into that that trap of causing trouble. And let's not forget the fact that, well, at least well, in my opinion, at you least know? in my old man days, they tried to teach us that cops are friends, especially in the elementary school at, at Absolutely, time. they try. But now you got kids who are saying, well, if I cry, I'm going to get arrested. So now you're going to turn a little hard asses. What did you get arrested for? I cried in school. Yeah. I threw a tip tantrum and cried in school. Right. And I got arrested for it. Six and eight, man. Opposed to a phone call home, maybe. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe the mom or so or dad. Hey, calm down. It's all right. You yeah, know, we're gonna or, arrest them. No, yeah, that's a waste of time. Yeah. A school resource officer too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's two two extremes. But back to the California yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. School, yes, is meant to educate. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, it's meant to prepare you for the workforce. Why do you think? Yeah. A school day is eight hours. Mm-hmm. Why do you think? Teach you to get up early and all that. It teaches you to be consistent mm-hmm. at being at a certain place at a certain time, staying on Reg- task. Go ahead. Regimented schedule. Mm-hmm. Completing jobs. And now, how are you? So you, you got eight, nine years, including kindergarten, of yeah. not having to obey an authoritarian figure. Then you're going to find out for a quick four years, you're going to have to suffer through it. But now, after high school, what happens? You go out and get a job? It's like, ah, eh, fuck you, boss. No. Yeah. Oh, you're fired. What, what do you mean I'm fired? You yeah. can't discipline me for telling you to eat a dick. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm fired? <laughs> well, flash forward 50 years. The world will be full of a-holes, right? It's going to be worse than ever. Not the world, just half of the United States. Yeah, it's going to be don't full of... It's going to be full of... Pussies and assholes, man. But, I mean, in my, in my opinion. But I think as Gordon's implying, the old saying, as goes California, goes the rest of the country. And so it's that, very true. That is a possibility. You know, not... That Nobody is, realizes that shit ain't working out there. That's the fucking crazy thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you, you're right, man. A lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't think one can own a copyright on a state flag, correct? What? I don't think... a person or a entity can own a copyright on the image of a state flag right? no man no. so i should be safe if i were to put up new t-shirts on d-410.com mm-hmm. with an upside down california flag saying save Ooh. california underneath it yeah it'd you, be quite offensive but i couldn't be, get sued for copyright I don't think, no i don't think so would you buy a save california shirt gordon weren't in vegas with an upside down california Ooh. flag on it Oh, absolutely. Because you're closer Ooh. to you're closer to California. Yeah, you're else. right. They're on the border, bro. Swimming in Californians. What are you talking uh, about? Yeah, I know, man. Insane. I see. No, I, dude, when I was out there a few Important. weeks ago, I saw more California license plates, because man. Because everybody's getting the fuck out of California. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. But as Gordon yeah. can tell you, the problem is they want to bring the California laws with them. They want to bring, yeah, exactly. You don't go to Wendy's and order a fucking Whopper or a Big Mac. If you want Wendy's, you go to Wendy's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, well, I... A lot of the people I've talked to in California, they they they're going to Nevada just because you know they want to get rid of the the, the taxes, man. They want to go over there. But then they want to bring the laws that generate. But those they taxes. want to bring certain laws. You're right, they do. When Gordon and Montana, you guys had the same problem, didn't you, Californians? Yeah, they're kind of like a locust. <laughs> it's like a plague. Well, bro, there's what something like fifty million of them or something in that state. That's, it's ridiculous the amount of people that are there. And most of them live in the Southern California. Yeah. And a little bit of Northern California. Yeah. I'll tell you something interesting though. What's that? The second most license plates I've seen. The, the state, the number two state for me in license plates out here. Mm-hmm. Ohio. No, Florida. Really? Get out. I've got. Four or five Florida people living in my neighborhood now. 
different houses. Hmm. And I, we, 73 homes. Is snowbird season kicking off a little early this year? You're damn right it like is. Like over the last three days, but I've, like yesterday alone, I saw like three Pennsylvania plates, a couple Ohio plates. I've started to see Ontario already. And... Now, this is simply me making an assumption. I'm not for sure where the guy's from because mm. he had a Florida plate, but he did have a Jeep. Uh huh. The front headrest on the back, because he had his roof off, had OSU logos. Uh-huh. The rear headrest had the silhouettes of people doing the OSU uh-huh. hand thing. On his bike rack, he had the word written in cursive of Ohio. <laughs> and then he had like two more. It's like, yeah, fellow, we get it. You're from Ohio. Yeah. yeah. You must be a Michigan fan. Yeah. A little overboard there, pal. No, I think it's kicking off early, man. I think we're getting people down here uh, faster than... Or earlier than than we have in previous years. I've noticed it starting about a week or so ago, just driving from here to Estero. You know, a lot of our, what we would consider our snowbird tags are either from Montana or Idaho. How a about of- how about you? Are you noticing any early early birds coming to town out there? No, this is the time of year it usually starts gearing up, especially up in Montana and it Idaho. Starts to cool down out cold, there. So. Yeah, fast. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's starting here earlier, D Train. I really do. I think, uh, and it's and it's getting busier and stuffs being built. There's more, you know, things are being built left and right around here, man. More, oh. more apartments and stuff. There's just more people, man. It's just getting busier and busier mm-hmm. and busier and busier every oh, day. Oh, construction's booming. I wanted to bring this up last week, but we were so busy, I forgot. Um, side project update. I got two requests for casting last week for the same television show mm-hmm. but they were like one of them i got the text at three in the morning <laughs> yeah that's right and it said we need a uh, casting for this role for tomorrow yeah at 3 a.m so i made some phone calls to see if i was available tomorrow and yeah, yeah so i sent a text i'm available okay i'll send the information she sends me information it's for that day <laughs> i call oh, her up and man. i said uh it's monday this has the instructions for monday the job's tomorrow tuesday no mm-hmm. it's today i said well one it's 9 50 call time was at 9 45 clearly i'm not going to make it yeah right i said two i'm replying to a text message that i got 3 a.m saying you need people for tomorrow so unless you're in yeah. california and it was still 11 p.m yeah, right oh i'm sorry i meant that Just for midnight. today and i'm like you know it's nice to know that people whose job it is to cast actors for a television show still find their jobs too uh- be fair, she's probably right out of school. But, probably. But still, it's 3 in the morning. You're sending a text out 3 in the morning. We need people for tomorrow. Okay, that's tomorrow, not today. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, come on. I mean, your job is logistics. You can't make that minor mistake for logistics, especially if you're, in a, you know, especially if you're clearly under emergency. If you're texting people 3 in the morning, you need people for that same day. You need to say, hey, this is going to be for five hours from now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then um, I got another one It was like, 24 hours but it was for like uh to play the role of a church parishioner so really? i didn't take that either because i didn't want to get screen time on as a church parishioner because i already got screen time as a mm-hmm. military officer mm-hmm. and i got a request for a gig on the 26th which hopefully i'll hear back about soon so hopefully that will actually is it turn. uh is it the same same tv show okay, yeah they're, cool, they're only on episode two still i mean that's how many scenes there are so yeah it's a lot of work man so yeah they're all it's been three months and they're only, i i was on episode has it been three months since you went went up to Orlando? Um, yeah. Wow. Yep, because uh, it was June, June, July. It was at the end of July. Wow. No, it was August, and then so September. So no, it's been two months. But yeah, still, that's a long time. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's still an episode two. So and they got like ten more to go. So there's a high likelihood. Oh my god. That I well, I mean, every season you're going to get about, a few callbacks, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that if I keep doing the same role, that I might. Especially since the uh, director of the the one episode liked me, hopefully I'll get a roll out of the point and, Hell yeah, and man. Uh, turn in a little something else. That'll but be yeah, bitching, man. So that hasn't been dead. It's just I, I haven't been able to completely change my. Well, one, I don't have a time machine. I can't fly up there. Yeah, right. It, you're sending me letters for a uh, casting call at nine forty five and it's nine fifty. So one, I can't go back five minutes, and two, I live three and a half hours away. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You got to have some kind of. Some prep time so you can get your ducks in a row before you take off, man. Gordon, you have to play in a game. We'll make it a short game. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, man. What do you got, bro? We're going to play a game called Ikea or Death. The hell? Ikea or Death? I'm going to give you guys a name. You tell me if it's the name of a death metal band or Ikea furniture. Oh, yeah, dude. I like this. You ready, Gordon? 
Let's do it. Now, this is one of the. This isn't head to head. This is going to be kind of a co op thing because it's one of those pages where you got to click to get the answer. Yeah, to click to keep going. And so we're going to do it as a team. All right. Family Feud style, just we're the only family here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, the first one's Absu. A B S U. Is that IKEA furniture or a death metal band? Absu? Yeah. I, oh, I'm I not going to do this one because I know the answer for this one. I'll, I'll participate coming up on question I two. think it's IKEA. Gordon? I think it's a death metal band. Okay, um, let's do a Rochambeau. See which answer we're gonna go with, because we can only choose one answer. Oh, well, actually, true. no. Here, here, here's what we'll do. We'll just we'll go ahead. Can to we? Head. No, we'll just go ahead to head. I won't play. You two can play. Um, so. Oh, all right, I'm going against you, Gordon. Okay, all right. Dave. We're gonna switch it up. We're Gordon. gonna switch it up. Okay, you said IKEA. Gordon said Death Absolute. Metal. I think yeah. Okay, I'm gonna click IKEA. Oh. oh. So it was Death Metal. Really? Yep. Yeah. Who said Death Metal? Gordon, you said Death Gordon Metal, right? Gordon did. Absolutely. See, I don't know. I see, see him. See, because I know IKEA, they got avant garde names for stuff, don't so they? So Gordon got the point on that one, right? Yeah, man. Okay, Damn it. Next, I for those at home, I'm it. sorry for that. I turned the buzzer down, so the next one shouldn't blow out your speakers and or your earbuds. Craft, C R A F T. Gordon? You know. IKEA. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with IKEA. God, oh, you're wrong. Right, dude, how is this? metal band. Kraft is a Swedish black metal band whose uh, lyrics focus oh, on black uh, metal man. destruction, hatred, nihilism, chaos, and death. Swedish so and guessed, Norwegian black metal man. So if you guessed end table, you're totally wrong. Stupid man. Oh well, I can't pronounce uh, Vitso V I T T S J O with the umlauts over the O. Vitso, man, dude, <laughs> this is ridiculous because some of these. Or they're just so obscure, and Gordon, I know. you're leading the board. What, Vitzio. Vitzio. V-I-T-T-S-J-O. Vitzio. Vitzio. That has the spelling of an Ikea product all over it. Dave? Yeah, I'm going to go with Gordon. Well, you guys both got a point. That's a very lame-ass. What the hell is <laughs> the, the incorrect one's like, nah. And yeah. Beep. It basically, it's a, uh, it's a name for the Ikea shelving unit system. Yeah, it's a shelving unit. It's, uh, it's actually nice. It's a flat black metal with uh, six glass shelves on it and uh, little LED lights at and the top. And it's called Vizio. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Ackercock? <laughs> Ackercock. A-K-E-R-C-O-C-K-E. That's an Ikea product. Ackercock. Gordon? I'm staying with Ikea on that yeah, one. Yeah, that's an Ikea product, man. Damn it! Metal band. Ackercock is an English progressive black death metal band known for What's satanic the and the sexual black lyrics. What's death metal, man? Because, you know what? Because some of these bands, I'm like, you know what? I've, I've They sound familiar, but i This I'll is just... right up your alley, Dave. You should be running the board I should on be this. killing it, dude. Li- just... I, I bet if Mick from the Unsupervised Podcast Oh, he'd be here, so disappointed. He'd be disappointed with you, but he'd also be running the board. Yeah, he'd be so disappointed, man. Oh, yeah, he'd run the board on this. Klubo. K-L-U-B-B-O. Klubo or Clubo. We'll go Klubo. Jesus. Dave, we're just... going to give you the chance to... to really? You, you want me to go first? Yep. I'm going with Ikea, man, because i got to get one of these right, man. Gordon? I'm just going to go the opposite direction. I'm leaning Ikea, but I'm just going to throw out a death metal man. Mm. Oh, Dave got it right. Damn it, man. It's a coffee table. <laughs> I mean, really, dude. I mean, because I, I could see that being a band name. Right it's a set of stain-resistant, easy-to-clean tables, but it's basically a um, a very – it's got, like, stainless steel legs and a, a base with a um, – Flat black. Hey, top. whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, real quick. IKEA is based out of Europe, right? It's Sweden, yeah. Sweden, yeah. Oh, no wonder these are all damn oh, that's Swedish why... and Norwegian metal bands. Yeah, man. because, exactly. Damn it. It wouldn't make sense if I don't know anthrax. all of them. You know, Gorgoroth, I know. <laughs> Bastig, B A S T I G. Bastig or Bostic? Nah, it's death metal. Gordon? I was just at IKEA recently. I'm trying to remember. Did you see any Bostigs? Bastig. That it's tied up two to two, by the way. In to, to see if we can't split up our, our, our tied score. Yeah, I'm going with death metal, bro. Going Ikea. It is Ikea. God damn it. Uh, Bostick is a kitchen <laughs> drawer handle with a nickel plate. Dude. It's a replacement handle for your pull-out drawers. That is such bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm pissed. I went to Ikea today and picked up some Bostick. Yeah. Boholm. Bolman. Bolman. B O H O L M E N. Bolman. Let's go Gordon first. Uh, Bolman. B O H O L M E N. One trick pony, but God. 
I'm going to lean on the uh, the uh, self those you know that furniture you put together. Mm. So IKEA. Yeah. Dave. Bowman. Death. So Gordon said IKEA. Dave said death metal. We're clicking on IKEA, and it's damn right. It. God damn, son of a bitch. A Bowman is a stainless steel kitchen what sink the hell complete is it? with a strainer. <laughs> that is such a piece of shit, those you man. At home, I'm uh, off now. You probably have dual kitchen sinks. Well, this is a single kitchen sink, so the, the second side is nothing more than a flat surface with uh, rises to act as a uh, drainer. Yeah, hey, Don Anderson joined us. What's up, Don? Hook life is going well for you. I'm I ain't heard such from you a, while. a loser, dude. I ain't a herger. <laughs> what? E-I-N-H-E-R-J-E-R. Ein Herger. I think death metal. Yeah, I'm going with death. Ein Herger. Yeah, I'm Ein going Herger. with death metal too. Both you say death metal? Mm-hmm. There it is. Ein Herger is a Viking metal band named for the warriors who sit at Odin's table in mm-hmm. Valhalla. Uh-huh. All right, man. Five to three. We're at nine of 20. I don't want to bore everybody with doing 20, so... Uh... That's death metal band. Okay. Good dog. Um, what? What do we got? One more? Or we no, over? we got like eleven more, but I don't want to bore everybody with doing twenty of them. So we all need right. to. <laughs> and Gordon's up by. Uh, we'll just we'll get a ten and just call all it right, a life. All right. How many more we got? Gruntal. G R U N D T A L. We're on nine twenty. So we got two left. Death metal band. Gordon. I- IKEA. We're gonna click on IKEA. Some Actually, Dave said death metal band first. We're gonna click on death metal band. God Whoa. damn it. Grundle is a kitchen organizer perfect for paper towels. It's basically a... Um, this is bullshit. It's a uh, metal... Two, it, they say paper towels, but it has two um, rods on it, so it'd be more better for kitchen towels. Because I, yeah, I don't know how you'd get paper towels on it. Yeah, that. what the hell is that? It's like a double towel rack. Okay, uh, this is strictly for... Uh, oh, God. For uh, funsies, because Gordon's already won. It's six to three. There's no way Dave can come back and won. Dr- uh, Dr- Durdick, D R U D K H, Druk, 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 or say death metal. Yeah, I would say. Oh, oh, Druk is an incredibly secretive Ukrainian band that mixes elements of folk and black metal. Well, if yeah. you're going to be super secretive, you're not going to get very many listeners. But I guess living in Ukrainian, I don't know, are they still under a dictatorship there? Not yet. Yeah, I think they're still under. Being invaded by Russia still. You guys man. want to do one more for fun? Yeah, one more, man. One more. Because Gordon already won the IKEA or Death Metal band. Uh, oh, Death Metal. Dat it. D A T I D with a weird circle above the death A. Death Metal. We go with the furniture store. Okay, Dave's a Death Metal. God damn. Shit. It's a uh, stainless steel That's oven, oven with a five year warranty. I, what the hell? No, see, she goes to show. I don't even go. I don't. Ass I got my ass handed and a game to me, that revolves man. Around death metal. Well, it's all, but it's Norwegian, man. I only no, you know. You say a, you listen to Norwegian death I metal. I do. I listen to Gorgoroth and a couple of them, man. I don't listen to a bunch of them, man. But he's an asshole, sir. You know, asshole. I don't Major listen to a, a whole lot Sorry, of sir. it, but I listen Doing to it. Best. He's Jesus, an asshole, man. So I went down to Sanibel Beach today, don't you? Oh, you guys probably can't tell my red complexion with all the lighting, but I got... Yeah, look at you, man. Getting some... Look at you I getting started, tan, man. I well, that, I don't know. That's more red. I'm burnt. How was it? It was uh, Sand Blast Alley. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> yeah, that wind was ripping up. It was you. super windy. <laughs> got sand blasted, but it was like a high of 85, so the weather nice. was perfect. Mm. But now I, I got a hankering for something now. Uh oh, the kite surfers were out there. Like, oh mad. yeah, huh? Yeah, man. There's there's a guy that actually listens to this show that does that. He, there was like five or six of them out there, and like one or two of them had the face gaskets on, so you mm-hmm. really couldn't see them. But as I swam out there, they're like zipping around past us, and I got the yeah. like, hey, these motherfuckers are older than me. Yeah, I can do this. Flying through the air. Now and stuff. one guy had what looked to be like a, a small <laughs> surfboard. But mm-hmm. all the rest of them, these new kite board boards, they look like exactly like wakeboards. Yeah, they're they're blunt nosed on yeah, both sides. Yeah, they're like wakeboards. The only difference mm-hmm. is they have like a little handle in the middle, so that when you're floating back, you can hold on to yeah. it to put your feet into it. But they're yeah, they're <sighs> blunt, just a little bit of concave. They just look fun as hell. I don't. I'm sure it costs about three grand to get into that oh, hobby. Yeah. But here's the Can't cool thing cheap. about the kites, because I've never been up close to them, and now I'm out in the water with them. Yeah. 
the kites, like the uh, the fairing, the front nose of them, uh-huh. I think they're inflated. Mm-hmm. There's like a, a round tube on the front, and it looks like it's inflated, and then you have the side fairings and then the center yeah, one. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they're like a hard plastic. I think they're literally inflatable. Hmm. Is what do you think they're putting in them? I mean, just well, they just, just air them up with like an inner tube or something. So they're airing them up to kind of keep the so when the wind catches catches the lip, it's just got a lip so that the wind will well, catch the kite it's, itself. You well, think? no, it's you to know keep what I'm the, it's to keep the kite afloat when it falls into the water. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So instead of having like a hard plastic right. or something, the damn thing would sink and you're tied to True. it. True. So yeah, they're actually inflatable, but that's cool, man. I'm looking. I'm, I'm watching these guys. Like, I can do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, right? I've seen him too, man, and I actually, there's a guy, he listens to this show, man, hopefully he'll call in, man, or or, or text or something. Facebook no, Lori, there was no uh, smell of red tide or seaweed. Um, the water wasn't as crystal blue as it tends to be, but no. it was still pretty clear. Um, where, where part of Sanibel did you go to? I just went to uh, the uh, lighthouse. Oh, that southern end right there. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, we went to nice. the antique store and walked around. Oh, yeah. And then I went and got some hot dogs at the um, <laughs> Schnapps or whatever the hell it's called over there. I don't know, man. They got great hot dogs there. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, but, I said uh, kite surf, man. I'll, dude. Yeah, like, bro. But it's like, do I need another expensive hobby to get into? No. <laughs> I don't have any money the way Yeah, it's got to be. It, it is expensive, man. You know, it's probably at least three grand to get started. But I, th- there's a guy I've talked to many times before, and he goes, hey, bro. He goes, it's a hell of a lot harder than you think it is, man. I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'm just going to give you guys a preview because you're here. Uh, yeah, the look YouTube at that. video should be out next week. Check that uh, out, man. This was the item that I did the video on. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You think you know what it is, but I guarantee you it's not what you think it is. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Um, the video I'm finishing up now, I've been putting a lot of work into it. Just finished a voiceover work on it. But this is it. It's very cool. Keep your uh, eyes out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, man. And uh, hopefully the video will be also posted on the manufacturer's website because they well, actually called me wanting to know when it's going to be ready. Oh, did they? Yeah. Do you think, uh, you know... The guy you... from Springfield Army called me on Monday. He's like, so, think... is that video ready yet? Yeah, you think Springfield's going to let you... Hang on to it? I hope so. I hope so, too, man. The thing's got a serial number of 29. I know. We looked at it. I was like, oh, 00029. I was like, whoa. Like, I want this so bad. That is cool, man. That is so cool. Springfield, man. That is a cool thing. See, that's your hobby right there, bro. You got enough invested in all that other stuff, man. With your military stuff, man. Come on. How much do you think you got invested in that? Shh, shh, shh. We don't talk about this. Yeah, I mean, I know. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's put yeah. me so tenders to put all that shit together. Oh, my God. Because I thousand dollars, man. Because, un one of the things I did smart is I it took me almost two years to put my first my first uniform together, mm-hmm. um, which is the Marine Corps P forty ones. But luckily the web gear and all that I could use on the other ones. But like my other uniforms, a lot of them I'd get like during holiday season. They'd have them on sale for a lot cheaper than what they normally are. That are like right. get on sale and all that good stuff. Hmm. I'm gonna Damn, do something. Dude. I don't know. Um. Uh, this probably won't work out too well for the video people, but that's all right. What do you got, bro? How many of you are familiar with the game called Last Shelter Survival? I've seen the previews for it constantly. Like mm-hmm. YouTube, it's like all it's like they they're plugging the living crap out of it. It's for those old people like me. It's kind of like the original. Um, Alexa, shut up. Is Why it, did you did you download it, man? It's kind of like the original you Star. Did download it. Yeah, I've been playing the hell out of it. It's like <laughs> it's like the original Starcraft, or almost like the original World at War. Okay. I'm sorry, War. Uh, the original Warcraft. All right. But it's one of those games where you you kind of create. Well, it's this is a post zombie apocalypse game. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of this one is you get you hook up with allies and you kill zombies and all that. But at the end of the day, the primary function of this is your. You're just building okay. shit and grinding out. Okay, that's what you're just building. Are you you're underground building, yet? And all no, that not yet. But anyhow, you 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 have a farm, if you will, and then you have resources. Mm-hmm. And just like all these games, you have your soldiers, and then you have your um like the people whose job it is to farm or workers, to chop down your, tree your, workers, your, right? Your, yeah. And um, I'm I'm not gonna lead this conversation. I'm just gonna state the facts and mm. and let you guys take it for what it is. All right. Turn volume. I'm trying to turn the water. here. All right, pump it up, bro. I'm working on it. Pump it up, pump, pump, pump it up. I like that guitar cable, man. It's nice. Yeah, but it's not giving me the sound I needed. Oh, there's sound. Yeah, I know, but I'm trying to pipe into the board here. There we go. Okay. So, 
one of the first default workers you get is this white chick, right? <laughs> and when you ask her to do something, she has a piece of dialogue. So I'm going to tell her to go transport some resources. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to check on the chick. Okay, she just said, if, if that, that is, is your, your wish. wish. Yeah, I just heard that. Okay. And the other one, I think she says, okay. So I'm going to go to the next guy you unlock. Mm-hmm. He's an old, he's an Asian guy. Right. I'm going to tell him to do the same job. Mm-hmm. You thought of that? He just said, you thought of that? He, you know, he, he don't want you to think you're too smart. He'll always say, you thought of that, or okay, right. I'm down for whatever. Okay. I've got another guy. He's an old white guy. I'm going to tell him to do the same thing. <laughs> work, work. Yeah, okay, right. Work work. work, work. The last guy. Done. She's done. Job's done. All right, so she finished up. So now the Chinese guy will be finishing up here in a second. Yeah. I got one more worker. All right. Uh oh. An African American fella. Uh huh. Job's done. Listen to this. Come on, I was on break. Are you... No. Not making this shit up. No. And the other one, he says, do I have to? Oh. That is the dialogue that this game company gave to the African-American worker. Job's done. So the white chick's like all about it. Yeah. The Asian guy makes you feel dumb. That was your idea? Or or his other piece of dialogue is, I was going to do that anyway because Asians are hard workers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old white guy. But yeah, the one African-American character, his two words of dialogue is either, do I have to or come on, man, I'm on break. Yeah, I just I was come like, what on, the man, fuck is that? Break. Here's one cool thing. They have a speaker set up outside of the village. Right. And to attract zombies, you play music. <laughs> but it's real short. Guess what song it says? Slipknot. Yeah. That's as long as it lasts. And it's Slipknot, man. But, uh, damn, now, they leased that out to them. The crazy thing is, is wow. I know there's nothing more annoying to other people in a room than someone who's playing a game with the volume up. Mm-hmm. And so I never played the game with the volume up. And so I really didn't, you know, every once in a while I'd kick it off after watching a YouTube video and I would hear the chick say, as you wish, or okay, yeah. whatever. And then I'd turn the volume down. And then one day, like two days after opening the, the African American character, I turned on and I heard him say, come on, man, I was on break. I was like, what, what? the? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? And then I tell him to do something else. Do I have to? Like, what the? Oh my god! Who the hell god. makes this game? How did that? Bro, I don't know, man. I just know that that's they... the only two pieces of audible dialogue he has. That's it. That's all he. That's... So when he finishes, because those the... those aren't main characters. So those two characters, those grunts, yeah. they have two pieces of dialogue. The Asian guy was, did you think of that, or I was going to do that anyhow? Yeah. Okay. And then job's done. The old yeah. white guy says, "Work, work," or "On my way." And then chick says, "As you wish," or "Okay." Does he say anything when he's finished? Just or jobs done. Do- oh, just so generic. he says. So he says the same thing. Jobs done. But I couldn't believe. I was like, "Really?" Wow, man. I told Gordon about. It, he just started laughing. That's crazy, man. It just goes to show. You know, you want. Yeah, you wonder who's who's putting some of the stuff together. I know they they plug the living shit out of that game. Yeah, on, they do. On and YouTube and stuff, man. It's kind of a fun game, but and I'm getting a little worn out on it now. But what? <laughs> I just did I hear that right? Yeah. Do so I the, have to? What the, come on, man. I'm <laughs> How's on break. break? It's like, wow, wow, that's. I could see that if a Dave was the character and Dave said yeah, that. Yeah, I'd be like, yo, bro, what's the deal, man? Uh, I got five that, minutes. <laughs> you kidding now that me? It's being discussed. Um, how long until you think you see it on the news news? Um, <laughs> I don't know. This game's been. I've used, or have you heard about this game called Last Shelter? I've seen it, but. You I know, started it's making. It's been out for a while. I started making a YouTube video about it because I thought it might go viral, but it's kind of hard because I got to get another phone, record the screen yeah. on this phone, and then. It's, so I, I have it on my computer. I haven't edited it because yeah. it's. But, it's almost. Like, That's freaking insane. They, dude, I don't know if you want to touch that, man. Yeah, you know. I didn't make the fucking I, game. I, I I know you didn't make the game, bro. But what, I'm just because saying, I'm white, I can't point it out. I'm not saying that, man. I'm just saying, bro. Do you wanna? Do you wanna open up that that? How is it gonna reflect? Refl- if anything, I'll get some hits on my YouTube channel. For it. <laughs> okay, bro. You know, let's. I didn't make the game. I know you didn't. It doesn't make me racist it. that I discovered it. No, not at all, man. I'm just saying, you know. I mean, would would that be something that you know? You want? Do you want to ride with that? Huh? You want to ride with that? You know the game, the whole thing, and see what happens. I mean, I, you know. Well, that's the only character's only dialogue. Wow. It'd be interesting to know that if it did blow up, how quickly an update would get pushed out, where they yeah. just changed his dialogue. Yeah. Maybe how your subscription numbers would change. Yeah, I wonder how many people play that game. Yeah, I, there's got to be. I wonder how many people actually play it with the volume turned up. 
Right. <clears throat> because, I mean, the volume, the, 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 the sound effects are annoying as shit, even yeah. if you are the one playing it. So I always play with the volume turned down. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty awesome. funny. I don't know. I can't, I, you know, I want to see, you know, as soon as you get the YouTube video ready, bro, you better, you know, let me know. <laughs> send, send me a, uh, make sure my notifications are on, man, so I can get notified for that video. I'll watch it. And while you're at the, uh, <laughs> while you're subscribing to my YouTube channel, as I burp up my soda, and I'm blocked from my website. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it was, I changed the password on my email. Yeah. And my stupid web client stays open in the background, and it's just hitting the stupid server with the um, wrong password. And so uh-huh. I think my web, my web host is blocking me. I thought I updated the password last week after they unblocked me, but mm-hmm. um, I can't get to my website from my house again. And so I sent them an email prior to the show. Right. So hopefully I can upload this when we're done. But oh um, man. For the rest of you, if you want to go to my website, go to d-410.com and uh, click on the Amazon link whenever you do your Amazon shopping. Save that to your favorites or to your desktops. When you do your Amazon shop shopping, it will not cost you an extra. Oh, yeah. But they will send us a few. Oh, and after yeah. that bank account gets to a certain point, they will send money our way, and that'll help out with the uh, show and bring you better content because, you know, you deserve better content. <laughs> yeah, God <laughs> knows, man. You and uh, while you're there, this. go ahead and click on YouTube videos. Click subscribe and activate the bell on my uh, Digital 410 YouTube channel. You can see when this uh, video I've worked hard on for this uh, product that I just weighed in front of the screen mm. comes up. It's not what it seems. You'll be That's surprised. True. It's more than meets the eye. Mm. No, we're not talking about Transformers either. Nope. And also, while you're there, thank you guys. Uh, we picked up a few new patrons over the last uh, week and a half, so thank you guys for that. Yeah, man. Um, I'm just going to tell you the patrons now. <clears throat> the video I'm making for the manufacturer for this is going to be semi-short because people have short attention spans. Mm. But I have a lot of extra content, so probably two or three weeks after that video goes up, I'm going to put on one on Patreon. It's going to have the unboxing and some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff of the recording of the video mm. um a longer version of the video so that'll be up for you guys too along with some other stuff day was supposed to start recording us some video on that new fancy phone of his but yeah he hasn't i hadn't me done nothing yet, yet man i hadn't done nothing man but anyhow gordon, i will i will i will gordon are you ready i got it man let's do the news life's in shambles <laughs> Dave's life's in shambles, but join us from the WD410 News Desk in Las Vegas. Here he is, Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how are you doing tonight? All right, Dave, get it together, man. No, I'm trying. He's been hearing that his whole life. Yeah, I've been hearing that for 44 years, bro. And he just lost the death metal competition. Yeah, man, so. that just that just hurts. To you of all people, Gordon. He's gonna you. Lose. Hey, Gordon used to listen to Nuclear Assault. Ah, Testament. Yeah. Testament. Eh, it's thrash. It's not Norwegian black metal. Yeah. You ever listen to Gorgoroth, Gordon? Apparently neither do you. You, could, you couldn't determine the difference between a fucking Ikea chair and a death metal band. Well, dude, I don't buy Ikea furniture. No, Damn, bro. I, in band. fact, I don't buy furniture at all, man. I just sit on the floor, man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, Gordon, go ahead with your news. All right. So remember uh, one Mr. Uh, 98-year-old veteran, Tom Rice, who jumped into the 1944 D-Day landing uh, celebration, 75th celebration this year? Yeah, I think he's 82nd Airborne. Okay. Yep, well, he uh, he made another jump, and he says he's going to do this until he hits 100 years old. Right so on, right on. He uh, just book, jumped in for a, uh, up in Norway, speaking of Norwegian. Yeah. This is actually the Netherlands. He, he jumped Where, in I, for the uh, Operation Market Garden. All... The guy parachuting. I can't. It says rice on it. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. The one that says rice on oh, it. All I see is something else. On well, you got to pull it over on screen. There, there you go. Is. There you go. Now you got 23 of them open. Yeah, I opened up one. Operation Market Garden, that was the first time we had to retreat because um, for some reason we, we felt that Eisenhower felt it was important to build the morale for the Brits to put old Montgomery in charge of that operation. Right. And uh, because the army, the uh, British army had already been at war for quite a few years and they were trying to give them a, a, a um, victory. Mm. But since they were running the operation, Dick Winters from the uh, Easy Company of the uh, three of <clears throat> from the uh, 101st Airborne Division, he reported in his book that at certain times of the day they would just stop movement to set up camp to have mm-hmm. tea time. But anyhow, um, we were just ill-prepared for that, and the Germans were well dug in. That was the first time that we had actually had to retreat during the war. Wow. Operation so, Market Garden was a complete failure. So how old, what was, how old was this guy again? He's 98, and he says he's going to do this until he's at least 100. Wow. If wow. you guys are World War II 
officially now. It was coming up um, probably in four days. I just recorded it yesterday. I got a lot of editing to do. The What's the Scuttlebutt podcast, we interviewed a vet who uh, was a pilot. And um, he flew on D-Day. He flew um, over um, Operation Market Garden. Speaking of the, tr- of the devil, he uh, bowed the bulge. His plane went down once due to mechanical failure. He talks about uh, bailing out of the plane. Hmm. But, uh, yep. And next Saturday, I will be driving up to uh, Spr- uh, C- Springfield, Florida, to interview another vet. So oh, for you, what's the scuttlebutt listeners? It's been a while since we've had a vet on. We've been doing a lot of interviews with authors and uh, reenactors and such. But this week and the following week, we'll um, not only be talking to vets, but we'll be getting details of the um, item I just showed you about the YouTube video. Nice. So go to WTSPWorldWar2.com. Yeah. All, All right, so... To put the uh, topic of the Area 51 raid to- away, put it to bed. Bro, couple- I've been all over this, man. A couple of things here. I think this kid who, who pulled the original joke really pulled a big joke and a fast one. Well, <laughs> he did. He, I don't think he expected it to be as what it was. It wasn't that much. That's just it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Four assholes. Well, what I'm yeah. trying to explain assholes, is. Assholes, sir. Or assholes. What I'm, uh, what I'm also trying to explain is is that weekend, that Friday and Saturday, I think it was Friday, had a ma- Las Vegas already had a major um, music festival called uh, Life is Life is Good. Shit, I forget what it was now. Life is but, Good, isn't that like this cheesy hippie like um, tire cover you see on the back of the Jeeps with the stick figure was that in the canoe? In- <laughs> Life is Good. Yeah, pretty much. I just I completely bungled the name of that one. It's all over the place, but is it, I mean they got all the major acts. So you had that going on down here. Plus, it's kind of funny the people you did see out there, they didn't realize it was getting a little chilly up that way now. Yeah, it's about it is the desert. Chilly. It's windy and mm-hmm. they're sanding up probably in every everything at that point in time. So <laughs> I'm glad they uh, they had a good time. I think they did say there was two thousand and Rachel for the uh, alien stuff type deal oh really then, i didn't even think there was that many another couple hundred a couple dozen i'm sorry that that, <laughs> to, that went to actually try to raid you know at least they stood out there with signs mm-hmm. so it was a big dud um <laughs> that's what you call a raid standing out there with signs so exactly. yeah what what, they can't raid right. what the hell were they supposed to do a naruto run Oh my God! So I was watching a, 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 I was talking to that about that. I was watching a newscast and the guys <laughs> out there. And I see this idiot do this run behind him. Did you see <laughs> that? I know it's hilarious. I saw it live and I just couldn't get it up. The faster. Naruto run. Have you seen what these people do, D Train? No, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find my notes because you're talking about their idea of a raid on Area 51 is to hold some signs. Yeah. Mr. Keith Anderson, who was 18, mm-hmm. he was in college during Pearl Harbor. Oh Jesus. They didn't have fraternities. They had what they called living houses. And the mascot for his living house was an owl. Mm -hmm. And one of the competing living homes, and he gets into this in the interview, (laughs) stole their owl. (laughs) Okay. So on Pearl Harbor, before the bombings, they were literally at the door with battering rams trying to kick in the door. That's a raid. Raiding this, uh, well, they weren't called fraternities back then, raiding this house to get to the second floor to re- Save their owl that was abducted. It was just like Jesus. a mascot, not a real one. And, yeah. and he said after Pearl Harbor, you know, after they found out about the bombings, they stopped. And a few days later, they got a bill for the damage they caused to the house. But those guys knew how to raid. You nah, asshole standing in front of Area 51 with a couple of cardboard signs you drew with a Sharpie marker standing yeah. on the parking lot of a CVS. That's not a raid, you jerk off. Doing a damn. Uh, do- and let's talk about the Naruto run. That's what I'm saying, bro. Because that, that, uh, come on. If some idiot tried it, he would just have a face full of fucking fence. <laughs> you know yeah. what, what is the naruto run the naruto run is some bullshit yeah, like running leaned over face first with their arms behind him like yeah. some japanese right. anime. yeah character. just japanese anime bro <laughs> I'll, the... you know, I'll demonstrate for you okay all right i'll demonstrate Go for it i'll demonstrate the naruto run now now Take mind you now mind you these people are supposed to be raiding the, you know the, the alien base doing this run man. okay all right so the Naruto run, man, it's so ridiculous, man, Gordon. So they were doing this on the newscast out there? One kid was. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so the Naruto run is a run where you're supposed to run faster this way. You're supposed to run faster this way, by the okay. way. All right. Yep. So you're Leading at full running speed, but your arms are back like this. And you're going 
<laughs> Just like that, dude. That's the Naruto run, dude. That's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> That's so ridiculous, dude. <laughs> these guys are stupid. Dude, who, dude, it's so stupid. Who comes up with these? <laughs> it's called the Naruto run. It is so stupid looking. <laughs> I'm, ra- I'm waiting to see myself. On, okay, here we go, dude. I see what I got. I'm, let's catch up. This looks, this, looks, this looks ridiculous. It's so stupid, dude. <laughs> but these people are supposed to be, they're supposed to raid. Like, it's supposed to be so much faster to, to run. Yeah, because. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry. laughing in your mic, jerk I'm ass. sorry. Because if, if this truly worked you don't think the olympic athletes would have picked this up 50 years ago i know right you would think that they would <laughs> you wouldn't think that they, they, they yeah sorry about that i love having sliders on this mixing board because i can turn it down real quick now yeah thank you go ahead gordon imagine uh, somebody uh, having a naruto run event and just all the people going face first into the ground <laughs> maybe we can put together a naruto run 5k <laughs> I don't want to see people go 3.2 miles like that. I think it should be the Naruto maybe 10 yard because I don't think they're making a big run. No, just every time they fall over, they got to get up and start running again. So but then you stupid, obstacles dude. in the way. I'm sorry, it's just so stupid. Man. I'm not saying a savage race, I'm saying a 5K. <laughs> Talking like a branch. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, these people are psychotic, dude. I had to turn your mic down because you're laughing so loud. Because it's ridiculous, I'm sorry. These are your people, man. And it, it, yeah. If you lived out in Nevada, you'd have been there with your poster board all misspelled. I, dude, I would have Actually, there. i got to give you credit. You're a better bro, speller than I am. Bro, I would, have been, yeah, I would have been there, though, bro. You're right. I would have been there. I'd have been hanging out with these people, man. Going, you yeah. Right next to that other guy. <laughs> you see me run across the, t- the, the news screen. <laughs> James said on Facebook, live stream the 100 meter Naruto. Woo. Yeah, dude, yeah. That's what I got, like a sex move. The 100 meter Naruto. The 100 meter Naruto. <laughs> bunch of chicks riding on Sibians. Yeah, dude. Hey, let's see. hey, babe. You want to try the 100 meter Naruto? <laughs> of Sibians on a skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> no, kids. Don't Google what a Sibian is. You don't want to know. We got to stop, man. <laughs> this Naruto's gotten out of control. These, <laughs> these kids. <laughs> the next oh. story, Gordon. Oh. In Coral, Florida. Oh, boy. Beautiful. I don't have any pictures for this, do I? No. I don't have any pictures okay. for Just open the window look outside. Uh, I just, you can yeah. probably open the Publix logo. That'll work. I don't know. Uh, we deleted that. Yeah, it's in the I trash can. It. I don't even want to begin to tell him how yeah. to get into the trash can on the computer. No, I don't, need, no I don't need no trash. All right. An investigation <laughs> after a person was brutally beaten and robbed in Cape Coral. Oh, man. That's so why I got to so care the, uh, in the In a field along the block of 1900 to 2000. Southeast 16th place near uh, Del Prado Boulevard. Okay. So according to police report, that's by my shop. Yeah. So according to a police report, and and you may want to take note. This was at Publix. Uh, not at Publix, but it's it's. In in the vicinity. Yeah, according to police reports, the victim was walking home from a nearby Publix. Okay. okay. Police said that the victim was jumped by three people, put in a chokehold, and punched. And then he was left with facial issues. Um, Lacerations? Issue. Yep. So not only, and this is the, the key to the story, not only did the thieves snap his cell phone and wallet, but they got his pub sub. Dude. Mm. I wonder if those are the same dudes that got me. Up, but, uh, what a pub sub was. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a sub from Publix. Mm. Yeah, it's a sub from Publix. He's boar head. Well, you can choose yeah. boar, boar's head. The, it's, He's an asshole, sir. They're, they're good, but I'm... I'm going to piss off a lot of Floridians here. What do you think? If I could get a Subway and get one of their buns and take it down to Publix, get a Subway sub, the public sub made, I would because... The, softer bread? Yeah, the bread yeah. is so much softer at Subway. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I like the uh, the multi-grain sub mm-hmm. bread from Publix, but it's like biting into a fucking rock. It it's is. so goddamn it, hard. It is tough. It? And the other thing they do, like... they open up the bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Open your hands like a like a book for those playing at home. Mm-hmm. Now think about putting your meat right in the crease of yeah. the binder, and then put your lettuce. And so when you fold it up, it's, it doesn't it close. Doesn't fold. It's just like it's kind of Publix kind of started doing. I mean, Subway started doing that crap a while too. And, yeah. and so when I go there, I gotta say, can you put the stuff on the bottom on of the, the bread on and the then flat? Load it up. Yeah. I'm not worried about it falling out of the sides. I can handle that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you almost have to eat the sandwich at an angle. Yeah, and it's even, it's even more harder. I mean, I do like public sub, but if I could go down a subway, like 
get one of their Italian urban cheese, six uh, nice. foot long breads, and just take it down to Publix and say, Could yeah. you make it on this for me, please? Yeah, throw some boars Be the best that. of both worlds. Oh, yep. man. So I think the moral of that story for D Train is if he finds himself with a pub sub walking back to the shop, yeah. swivel. Yeah, watch out, bro. It sounds like there's some bandits on the loose in your neck of the yep. woods. <laughs> I ain't scared. <laughs> no, I know you ain't scared. I Anyway, so uh, speaking for reasons not to be scared, uh, remember I was discussing about the guys who um, stole from the shop <laughs> ship? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just reading Facebook. James replied, well, if the Japanese, <laughs> well, if the Japanese better make it 100 millimeter. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> 100 millimeter, no room, no <laughs> Right. So remember there's a way of... <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Go ahead, I turn this mic down. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, remember uh last year I was discussing about two guys or at least one of the guys stealing um guns from or firearms from Shot Show. Uh-huh. Well, a Las Vegas man gets two years in prison for possessing 65 guns stolen from that show. Jesus. And Which, <laughs> because you don't gun. think that these manufacturers who take these firearms, one, they're not required by law to register the serial numbers yeah, that they're man. putting out on display? Yeah, exactly. What the hell? It's yeah, like people who steal cell phones. What the fuck are you going to do with that? The SIM card's not one. Not going. It's going to come up stolen as soon as you put a SIM card in it. Yeah, it'll come up as being stolen because it's the, what's the IMED or whatever they call it, IMEI. Well, it's like people who number. break in gas stations and steal scratch off lottery tickets. You don't think those serial well, numbers are reported the very yeah. next morning and then now there's no way a null and void, but b when you go to turn one in, you're going to get yeah. arrested. Yeah. People are dumb. Yeah, and they yeah. try and they will try to cash that in too, yeah. bro. I've seen it. So not only does he get two years in prison, it's followed by a two year, uh, two years of supervised release, including a conditions that he's going to have to render about a thousand hours of community service. Wow. This wow. Uh, scumbag's name is Jamico Foster, 27, uh, of Las Vegas, and he pleaded guilty June 20 or June of this year on one count of theft of a uh, f- firearm from a FFL and one count of uh, unlawful possession of a machine gun. So he also got a hold of an automatic, it sounds like. Mm. United States District Judge Richard F. Bulwer II presided over the sentencing hearing. Sentencing hearing. Now, I'm surprised if he actually had a full-on a machine gun, he didn't get a lot more time. He's an asshole, sir. So he must be mm. ratting some people out or something. Oh, know? yeah, you know, especially if he's not the one who stole it and he just bought them and he, didn't, he wasn't aware he was dealing in stolen goods. Speaking so. Among here's the here's the uh, what they have found among the 65 stolen firearms: 18 handguns, six rifles, not one, not two, but three machine guns, one short-barreled rifle and rifle, and 35 suppressors. Wow, huh. damn man. Yeah, I'd say he's uh, so he only got two years and then uh, two years prison and how much time uh, community service and all that? Uh, two years uh, federal prison, two years supervised mm-hmm. leave. Yeah, he snitched. Out. Hours. He uh, snitched be, on somebody, man. You know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say if you buy Had a firearm and you weren't aware that they were stolen, at least from a shot show, yeah. and then you get arrested for it, I don't call that snitching. I'm calling, no, I'm just saying. I'm you know. saying turning in a. Now, if you knew that. Now, if the prices were so ridiculously low, you had to be a moron that you didn't did not know they were stolen. I mean, like if you're getting them for yeah, you, know, I mean, you know a third of the price and clearly you know they're stolen but if you're paying a little less in retail you might think that this is a gun shop guy who closed on a store so yeah, yeah, yeah. if that was the case i would happily turn the guy over too if i'm yeah, getting yeah. two years for not knowing that i just bought a bunch of stolen firearms yeah, i didn't know yeah i get it but could, could you imagine how pissed this guy he must have had a boss how pissed this boss would have been if he showed up with uh, all those handguns being high points oh, <laughs> yeah right Holy well, if they're crap. high points, the cops wouldn't have gave him any jail time. They would have just laughed at him and said, you're stupid. Yeah, you're an idiot, man. You're doing the world a favor. Yeah, thanks for taking high points off the street. Yep. Uh, what yep, else but, you got? Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, that all right. All for the news today. Beautiful, man. That was our news guy from the WD-410 News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada, joining us live, um, as he always does. Thank you so much, Gordon. Got it. Yeah, bro. Well, so, what else do you got? You got anything, man? 
No, I think that's about it. I think we're going to wrap this bitch up. Yeah, let's wrap it up, man. I'm, uh, I'm uh, good. Dave, go out there and teach Don to Naruto. Right? Yeah, dude, we're going we're gonna to start. I'll, I'll film Dave doing it in my yeah, front yard gonna... for everybody. I, I want to see you guys racing each other. So get, you want to see uh, you out there and, and do that. That'd dude, be awesome. Dude, I'm telling you, man, the Naruto, bro, I'm going to get into it, man, this week. I hope everybody had a great weekend. The work week starts tomorrow or today if you're listening to this from the download. And for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live and YouTube and Periscope, thank you guys so much. And if you didn't know, you can download this every Monday at Apple Podcasts, Google Music Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere fine podcasts are available. Please share us with your friends. Our numbers are growing, and we want to keep them that way. I know we talk about some dumb shit, but hopefully we make you laugh. And hopefully within the last hour and five minutes, we said something to make you laugh, something to make you realize that, uh, you know, Life is good because life is hard. Life is short. Go out and uh, do what you got to do. Accomplish your dreams before you wake up dead. Gordon? I can be followed at Aegis1974 on Instagram. Uh, everybody have a great week. What about your Twitter? Uh, Abernathy.Gordon at Twitter. All right. <laughs> yeah, dude. All right, man. Well, hell. There you go, guys. So, All right. Uh, have a great week. Later. Damn right. All right, all right. Yeah, man, we, we're so stoked, man. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, I hope we made you laugh. And I'm going to try to go film Dave doing 100 millimeter, 100 uh, meter Naruto yeah. off my street. Yeah, because I'm telling you what, man, I had a good time tonight, man, boys. I had a good time with the show tonight, man, and we hope we made you laugh. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week, man. Stay stoked. <laughs>